right, this next is so we can do it over. All right, Joyce, I just wanted to sit down with you and go over um, the models of your teeth that we made last time and kind of give you some information as far as what causes problems with the bite. But what I wanted to start with is a set of models that are what I would consider ideal. And just to point out some things about these models, obviously there's no wear on any of these teeth. Uh, when we put the teeth together, there's a certain amount of overlap in the front that happens. If I, if I mark where the top ones end with my thumbnail, you can see that they overlap, the top ones overlap the lowers. That's critical as far as your bite working properly. That needs to happen. Hmm. The other things that need to happen is if you look on the back teeth, they have a row of cusps, and then they also have like a valley that runs through the middle of the teeth. So the, the cusps on one arch meet with the valley of the other arch when they bite together and then the teeth have to hit in the proper places. So those are the things we look for in a bite that's working properly. Is that the front teeth overlapping properly and the front teeth actually touch, the bottom teeth actually touch the insides of the upper teeth. Hmm. So I'm going to set those there and then bring in the models of your teeth. And yeah, I don't think mine will look like that. No, they don't. <laughs> so if you look at yours, you can see right away that you've got a lot of wear on your front teeth. I mean, you've worn all that tooth structure off on your front teeth. And if we put your teeth together, you can see that there's hardly any of the overlap, maybe one or two millimeters of overlap. You'd like to have about at least four. So there's very little overlap on the front teeth. Yeah, my teeth look flat. Yeah, and they're flat because you've worn them off. You basically you can see how much wider they are here as opposed to these teeth, where these teeth come to a nice not sharp edge, but an edge on the end, and these teeth basically are just flat like mm. posts on the end. Mm -hmm. So what I want to do is just uh, take a few minutes and explain to you why that happens. And of course the other, the other problem that you're having that you explained to me is that you also have pretty frequent headaches going on. So I think I can explain to you why the way your teeth are coming together, other than wearing them down, are also causing the headache problems that you're having. So if you look at the screen here, this is just an example of a bite working properly. You can see that, that the teeth are similar to what we saw in the, the first model where the teeth all come together, the front teeth are overlapping. And then if you look up here, this is the joint of your lower jaw. There's one on each side. And the red line is symbolizing that the joint is lined up properly. So when you open your mouth, what happens in the joint is initially there's a rotational movement as you open. And then as you open even wider, the joint slides. And this is the only, body, only joint in the body that actually does that, where it has a rotational movement and then a sliding movement as well. So what happens in most people's mouths is when they bite together, they actually pull their joints out of place. And that's really what causes all the problems, is the misalignment between the bite and the joint. So if you watch, the joint does the same movements. It still rotates and then slides, but nothing is in the right place when that's going on. So if we go to the next slide, this just this picture just puts the muscles into place that go along with the, the bones. So if I run this little movie, you'll see the muscles will turn pink when they're actually working. And that's, that's an ideal movement. Again, everything's lined up properly. The teeth are lined up properly. The joints lined up. And the muscles are just working as they should to open and close your mouth. Now, in this view, this is, again, the, the view with the muscles in place. But this is the view where the bite is pulling the joint out of place. So you'll see that this is what tends to cause the headache issues for those people who have headaches, is that the muscles are actually in a spasm because they're having to essentially work in ways they're not meant to because they have to literally pull the joint out of place every time the teeth come together. And you'll see how they show the spasms in this in this picture here. Hmm. So, 
So there are a number of uh, a number of different muscles at work here, which can cause headache issues, neck ache issues, uh, shoulder issues by all those muscles really having to work overtime and, and it's kind of a chain reaction as one muscle starts working overtime then another muscle might start picking up the slack for that one. So that's why even people can have pain into their neck and shoulders that is caused by their bite issues. It's a chain reaction? Yes. So there are a number of ways like people have head who's telling me they have headaches like around their eyes Mm -hmm. That's these little muscles over here. Uh, people have headaches on the side of their heads. That's usually this big muscle right here. So each muscle can cause pain in, in certain areas. So it's not necessarily, that's why the patterns of headaches can be so different because it's, it can be different muscles that are causing the pain. Yeah. Yeah. And this is just a comparison again of the two, two different bites. Especially in someone like you where you have all this wear, I mean your muscles are really working hard to wear your teeth down like that. So that explains why, you know, you, you do have problems with headaches. Yeah, it's gotta be a lot of pressure to create that flatness. Yeah, it <laughs> sure does. So what what would happen if we could put your joint where it really belongs? And that's what we can show you here. So if we could take your lower jaw and actually put your joint back where it belongs. You can see now the joints lined up but now your teeth don't line up. And this is what sets up the problems right here is that your brain isn't going to really let you crash into those back teeth all day long. So your brain literally moves your jaw forward to avoid these interferences in the back and pull, that's what pulls the joint out of place. And that's what sets up the problems for the tooth wear. So there's a lot of different ways people will, will deal with this issue. One way is they'll literally grind their back teeth down. You know, they'll, they'll work, they'll grind their back teeth down. Um, a lot of people will break back teeth. You know, all of a sudden they'll just break a piece of tooth off of their back tooth. And again, that's because the teeth just aren't lining up properly. Mm -hmm. But most people, what they'll do is they'll actually move forward to avoid those interferences in the back, which is really what you've done. So what happens first is you wear the longest tooth down first, which is your canine. And then as your canine gets shorter, then you start wearing your front teeth down. And then once your front teeth are worn down enough, then you start wearing the back teeth down. And that's really where you are. You've worn, you know, you've worn enough of your front teeth down that you're literally starting to wear these back ones down now. Because you've gotten these front ones so short. So what do we do to fix all of this? So what we want to do when we treat you is we want to have, when you bite together, you know, here's the condition where you're biting together and your joint's out of place. We want to have it in harmony so that when you bite together, your joint is in place. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we do in the treatment phase is actually get the joint aligned. And the way we do that is we actually have an appliance that we put on your upper teeth, a piece of plastic, and this becomes your new bite. Now you have to wear this, this appliance 24 hours a day. And then what we do is we go through a process of adjusting it, usually on a weekly basis. And as we adjust that bite on that appliance, we can slowly get your joints to find the place of harmony that they really want to be in. And so that's the initial part of the treatment. So once we get your joints lined up, then we can figure out what to do with your bite. Because once the joints are lined up, you know, you're going to have something like this that we saw before. You know, you're, the joints are going to be in the right place, but now when you bite together, your teeth aren't going to be hitting properly. Mm -hmm. And so then we can figure out what we have to do to the teeth in order to get back to the original picture that we saw where the teeth and the joint are all in harmony together. So what we did the other day when we were doing our bite study is just in a matter of a few minutes, having you bite on that piece of plastic the other day, we tried to settle your joints as much as we possibly could. And you can see in those front teeth there that there's actually a gap now between your front teeth. And so this was just an initial study to see 
perhaps where your jaw, your jaw may move to once we line the joints up. Mm -hmm. So you can see how we got a little bit of movement there the other day where those front teeth don't come together anymore. And that's, that's essentially what's going on in your mouth. So once we, once we go through the initial process of getting the joints lined up, that's the part where the muscles will start to relax and your headaches will start to go away because the, the joint will start to find its home where it really belongs and then the muscles will start to find their harmony because they're not having to pull the joint out of place all the time. Okay. So that's kind of an overview of everything that's going on and, and the next step, you know, if you prefer to move on would be to, to get you in the appliance and start the process of aligning the lower jaw. Okay.